then start the broadcast. Now. Good evening. Welcome, welcome back once again to One Stop Ministries with Reverend Miles is the pastor at One Stop Ministries. Um, I want to share a few things with you on my upcoming events in December. Uh, I will be at Pastor Roxy's church, which would be uh, Good Faith and Destiny Church Ministry. That will be in Petersburg. Uh, December 6, 2014. Also, if you need to hit me up on any other upcoming events that I will be doing, you can go to my Gmail, which would be ministerdennismiles uh, at gmail.com. And if you need to hit me up on my Facebook, it would be dennismiles dot, dennismiles dot 315 at Facebook. Dot com. Let me go over that one more time. Dennis.miles.315 at Facebook.com. Now, that will be, you can pull that up my Facebook. That will in turn give you everything that's coming up on my upcoming events. But now, the one that I really, you can go to and that will pull up my ministry. That will tell you about the uh, uh, everything that's going on in my ministry. That will be. Uh, my website, which would be http dot dot slash minister Dennis Miles dot wax w i x dot com slash one slash dot, uh, stop slash ministry http dot dot slash minister Dennis Miles dot Wax, w -I -X dot com slash one slash stop slash ministry. Now, if you need to pick, um, hit me up on any of these upcoming events, you can go to those uh, sites to pull up on my upcoming events. That will tell you about everything that I'm doing the, this far. I have uh, a couple of nice things coming up in December. The biggest one, I, I got some good stuff. I'm, I'm excited about going to Pastor Roxy's church in Petersburg, Virginia. It's called Good Faith and Destiny Ministry. It's December 6, 2014, and the times will be at 6 o'clock, which will be on the Saturday. I'm looking forward to have some support here from Richmond and Petersburg. If you need any additional information, hit me up, but I will be posting some more stuff, which will be on tomorrow. Um, so with that being said, it's just uh, I'm just excited about the upcoming events. I may be traveling to uh, Louisville, Kentucky also, uh, December, November. I believe that will be, and I will be giving up a little more information on that also. Um, but right now, I'm at Shine, uh, Shining Light uh, Pentecostal Holiness Church, which would be in Petersburg, Virginia, uh, where I'm preaching out there also. I do that every Sunday, so if you need information about that to come to see what we're doing out there, hit me up and I can give you the information on that. And I just gave you all the information that you need. Now, at 7.15, there will be, a, lines will be opening up for call-ins, which would be 804-347-2880. 804-347-2880. This is Reverend Miles from One Stop Ministries. Also, I just had an interview with Key Awareness. The uh, topic was featuring myself on drugs, Cut, Drugs Uncut by Reverend Dennis Charles Miles. So that will give you a little insight on every on the, the situation that occur in my life. Uh, it will be beneficial for you to try to get out to get this here paper. It's called Key Awareness. Uh, so get a chance to get out and get it. It's going to be a blessed uh, opportunity for you to read this. And then if you need to call me on the, if any questions involved in that, you can reach me once again either on my website, my Facebook, or uh, on my YouTube. You can pull, pull that up on all three of those sites. So I'm looking forward to that. Once again, the number will be 347-2880. What I will be talking about today, um, it's, I want to keep this here. I want to do a little uh, different something today. Uh, you know, we have purposes in our life. And uh, 
I, uh, I'm talking about serving a higher purpose in our life. How do you serve a higher purpose in your life? Now, when you go through pain in your life, uh, we go through pain and sometimes we just want to stop. Now, when you go through pain, you can't let it stop your purpose in life because you have to keep going on and on and on and on. It's just like an ever ready battery. You got to keep going on and on and on. For instance, if it was myself and I'm going through some pain right now, every once in a while, I go through pain. But then I cannot stop that my purpose, what I'm here for. My purpose, even though you go through pain, you still have to carry on your job because now you, you're working for the Lord, Jesus Christ. And see, when you're working for the Lord, you got to be able to overcome pain. See, because when as you're overcoming the pain, your blessings come because now you start to look at, you're trying to exceed this, to overpower the pain. And once you can master how to overpower pain, it's, it's a, a great thing that when you can overpower your pain, your pain meaning that a job loss. And that's a serious thing, even losing your job. Because we all go through pain. And what is your true purpose of serving the Lord? You got to be able to serve your higher power. You got to be able to serve your higher power because whatever God wants you to do, you should be able to do it and do it with good, strong faith and have faith in the Lord because the Lord is the one that will bring you through the things that you may go through in your life. Now, do you want to go through pain? Sometimes you have to go through pain to get to something. And when you go to God, and sometimes you have to suffer a little bit. It's okay to suffer because you know that your Lord say you will pull you out of what you're going through in these days and times. Because look at what you see in the streets, how the homeless people go through this here stuff. It is cold out there. Think about what they're going through. Think about the suffering that they go through. And as men of God and women of God, you walk past these people every single day. Now, it's starting to get cold out there. Now, what do you think about the pain about that? The coldness that they may have to go through as a homeless person. My God, we see, we have to be able to serve the homeless folks too. Because they need love just like we need love. There's times like we may have a warm house, but you know what? Uh, viewing all this, they go into something, but why are they going through something? They had a bad break in their life. I had a bad break in my life. I was homeless. And people would walk right past you and just look over you like you're nobody. But see, we are somebody because we belong to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, these folks are just falling on some hard times. My brothers and sisters, when you see these folks out here, it's not wrong to say hello to them because everybody needs love. In our, these days and times, we all need love, brothers and sisters. We got to understand about the power of love. The love is coming from your purpose of serving God's people. Even though they're homeless, these are God's people because the same person that you might look at saying they're, they, they're not worth a quarter. If you want to go back in times, you can even go as far as look at uh, uh, Tyler Perry, how he was homeless. But see, now the same people that kick dirt in their mouth, he's not the type of person would you have to go kick dirt and bite right back because it doesn't serve the purpose. Look at myself, where I'm at right now. God is blessing me with some stuff. Now, when I was homeless, my family and I, there was times when I would sit on the bus nobody would, did want to sit next to me. But now, my brothers and sisters, they all want to be a part of the success story because when you know someone that has went through something, now you want to be a part of the story. So that's why when you see someone out there going through a hard time in their lives, my God, this is serious. We cannot just walk past people 
and just say that, oh, they're homeless. They have a heart, too. They have feelings. They have a mother and father. They have brothers. They may have a daughter. They may have a son. They are going to some. So what if they're going to something? Why can't we stop and serve a purpose? Because we're here for a reason to help others. Now, the ones that don't want to help no one, those are the same ones. As you're going up the steps, you will come back down. And now you will be the same type of person that would want some help. My brothers and sisters, want help, you can get help. But don't forget, when you step on others, it will come back to you. Especially, especially homeless folks. We all are going through something. We are only one paycheck away from going to a homeless stage in our life. I thank God in the name of Jesus that he has me to the point where I'm at. Just because I'm a man of God, just because I can preach the word, just because I may have a church coming up, which is coming up soon, was that, does that exempt me from being homeless only thing that exempts me from because I know I'm a man of God and I belong to God. But if you don't follow the word of God, you will be right back where you are at square one. And when you go come back from homeless, when you were homeless and you, God finds a way to give you the strength to carry on. But yet. When you go right back into the same situation you just came out of because you un grateful you don't want to respect the lord's word and the lord word is so powerful we got to understand about being a powerful man of god how do you become a, a powerful man of god it's simple because you're serving a higher purpose of life and the higher purpose is working for god now god's team is an awesome team but anybody is not chosen to work for god but god see god don't have to search for you he doesn't have to search for you. You have to search for God. You have to search for God. God don't need you. You need God. But my brothers and sisters, I'm sharing with you right now. I'm on this here thing with the homeless people and the, the higher power, the service. How do you serve these folks? Serving your own life. You got to be able to serve your own life too. You got to be able to. You have to understand. What is the real word of God? He says. Even though you walk through the valleys. And the shadows. Of death. It's okay. Because when you walk into that shadow. You have to. You know that. At the end of the tunnel. There's a light. At the end of that tunnel. But we sometimes don't even, you can't even see the light that's in front of you. Because you are so busy focusing on you and you only. And I'm just so stuck on this right now that we got to be able to help one another. Especially the folks that don't. Think about the holiday. Think about how you may sit at your dinner table on Thanksgiving Day, all Christmas, all Easter, you're passing gifts, and then you're walking past folks, homeless people, and you're looking at them like they're nothing. Instead of saying, I'm not saying to bend over backwards, but it's always nice to say, well, you have a great day. It's going to get better. Can I pray for you? Can I pray with you? It, what does it hurt to do something like that? Even you got preachers. Don't even, you got very few preachers will really go out their way. Very few. And they know who they are. I don't have the big church. I have the ministry of the U stream. The church is coming. I'm in Petersburg. I have the opportunity to do different things. I'm in the process of going to Louisville, Kentucky to preach out there. So why wouldn't I help others? Um, I am so grateful just to be on this side to be able to help someone. Because I never think I'm above someone. Because when you start thinking at that level that you're above someone, my brother, you will lose 
every time because God will, he ain't got to fix you. You will fix yourself because you'll do something dumb and stupid. That's the, make, that's the makeup of our society right now. When they think they got it all and they got the world by their hand and they just don't realize what is, what, look here, what is your true purpose of life? There's someone may be out there. What is your true purpose? Is it to serve God or is it to serve others? Or is it to help others? Can you help someone that can't help themselves? That's my question to you right now. Can you help someone that can't help themselves? Tell me that. You probably don't even have an answer for it. You probably, just, like I said, you don't have an answer. For me, myself, a phone call, I wouldn't care if you call or not. But my job is to bring this word. I don't, I'm not worried about nobody calling because somebody is going to see this word. They're going to listen. It ain't about the phone call no more, ladies and gentlemen. You do what you want to do. I'm doing what I need to do. For this word of God. Because like I said. I don't know if I just shared this with you. I did the interview with Key Awareness. And the lady read the article. And uh, the article was once again. Drugs uncut by Reverend Dennis Miles. But you got to read it to understand what I'm talking about. Because I'm not going to get into that. Because I don't have a lot of time. But anyway. I got a phone call. Uh, day before yesterday. And the lady says. Uh, Reverend Miles, I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to read this because there was some stuff that was going on in our life that I was sharing in the article about the drugs, drugs uncut. But see, even with drugs uncut, it doesn't matter because there's always a way out of your situations if you know who your higher power is, why are you serving your higher power. It's because the Help others out of situations that they can't help themselves. That's what it is. Help someone that can't help themselves out of the situation that they're in right now. They're in, there's someone out there right now. Oh, my God. Reverend Miles, do what you're doing right now. There's someone out there right now that's about to lose their apartment. Right now. Or lose their house. Or about to get a divorce. Or they just came from the doctor. And got diagnosed with a terminal illness. Now they're walking around the streets lost. Don't know which way to go. And here it is. You come walking past with your big jolly self. Walk right past them. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to say is there anything that I can do for you? There may not be nothing that you can do. It's the thought, the gesture of saying that word. Is there anything I can do for you? Can I pray for you? But see, praying is too much like right for people that have their heads stuck in the air. It's too much like right. Because, I, you know, I was getting to the point where... Well, I really want to preach the word, but I, I can't do this right now. I got to give you some uncut, some, uh, uncut conversation. Yes, I am a preacher. You can pull all that information up. But right now, this message needs to go to someone that thinks they're above the law. Help someone. Why can't we help someone? Ain't nobody asking you to give them a hundred dollars or do this or do that. Help them somehow. Share a, a profitable word to them. Give them a word. Give them a word of encouragement. Give them a word of encouragement. What does it have? What do, it doesn't hurt you. Now, when you start to give them words of encouragement, now you are beginning, now you are beginning to serve your higher power of purpose. The purpose is, this is what God exactly wants you to do. 
He wants you to serve in any form, shape, or matter. He needs you out there to fight for him. He needs you to be on the battlefield for him, not for yourself. See, we're on the battlefield for the wrong reasons. We're on the battlefield for the drugs, chasing women. We're on the battlefield for all the wrong things in our lives. We all go through these uh, uh, situations. I was on the battlefield. I wasn't always on the Lord's side. I was on the other side of the fence. So, but when I knew that I was going to some, I said, Lord, how come you're not helping me? But see, God still was helping me. I look here. I'm still here. I'm still alive. I learned how to serve the purpose. The purpose is to, to rejuvenate someone that's going through something that can't help themselves. Which is, sometimes you got to tell them about the word of God. Sometimes people just don't want to hear the word. Well, my brother or sister, can I pray for you? Because I got, this might just help your situation out. Sometimes they may want prayer. And then there's times that they just don't want to be bothered with the word of God. They'll come out with so many excuses. But the excuses is nothing. Because our life sometimes are full of excuses. Our lives are full of excuses. We got to understand about the things that we go through in our life. Now, when you start, when you start serving the Lord, I mean really serving him and going out the way for God to serve his purpose and to serve your purpose, all you're going to get is you're going to, you might as well get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because your rewards are coming. It's coming in abundance. And the abundance are, it could be your finances, could be healing. It could be a deliverance from someone in your family that's going through the drug situation. It could be a new job for you. It could be a ministry for you. It could be a church for you. It could be a vehicle for you. There's so many different forms that it, this thing could come at you. And when, it, when the, with the purpose comes, you got to be able to sow that seed. Are you willing to sow a seed? Sometimes you have to sow, sow that seed, and the seed takes a while to grow a harvest. A tree takes five years, 10 years, to even before it breaks ground. When you sow this seed into your people or the homeless, it doesn't take long. It depends on how bad they want it. There are some people out there just don't want to be bothered, some homeless folks. But I'm not giving up on them. And I don't want you to give up on them. I was that situation. God could have gave up on me, but he didn't. My wife, when she was living, she could have gave up on me, but she didn't. She didn't see me get to this point in my life. But my kids are seeing me go through this here elevation in my life. Now, I know my purpose. I know my purpose. My purpose is to be a, a part of God's team. And I consider myself one of his top performers for God. I don't care what anybody else says. I know what I feel. I know what he told me to do. I know what I'm called for. To serve the Lord at all times. Because I'm telling you, this guy that's behind this here uh, camera right now, he wasn't worth two causes to put together right here in Richmond, Virginia, in Hoboken, New Jersey. I couldn't put it together because my mind wasn't on no purpose. You know what purpose that I really had? 
My purpose was out there to get high. Had plenty of opportunities. There's some people right now, the homeless folks, they probably had opportunities, but they just couldn't make it. They gave up. It's easy to quit, but it's hard as heck to, to keep it going. Anybody quit? Sure. You got a bunch of quitters out there. But do you realize by you being persistent and fighting against the odds, and if you can fight against the odds, brothers and sisters, watch the reward that comes to you. All I had is the odds against me. Homeless people, all they have is the odds against them. But we need people like myself, Reverend Miles, to go, in which I do that. To go out there and I preach the word outside, downtown, to transfer a point. It hasn't been there for a minute because it got a little cold out there. But I know I got to make my press my way down there because God don't care about how cold it is. I need to go back down there in the next couple of days so I can share some words because I got some good stuff that, that God has blessed me with. And sometimes, you know, uh, I like the guy. I can go through the Bible. I can bring the word. I got that ability to do that. But right now, God is telling me to take this to another level. A level where we got to speak on the terms that the people, that, that the folks that are going through something, we got to speak on that level. We have to speak on a level where folks can understand your message. And my message is don't quit. I look at homeless people all the time because that reminds me of me when I had to go through this stuff myself. You just don't know all the things that we go through. Even as a man of God, a reverend, you, we go through stuff every single day just to stay alive. Just to stay from folk going back into the pits of hell. You got to constantly pray that you stay the course. You got to be able to stay the course so you can, so you can uh, continue to go on the purpose, the purpose of life, the true purpose of life, the true purpose of life, my brothers and my sisters. Do you know what your true purpose is? Do you really know what your calling is for God? Do you honestly know? When you, go, when you lay down tonight, ask yourself that question. And God will give you the answer. What is your true purpose? Do you know your calling? Do you honestly know your calling what God is to, trying to do for you? And then maybe it just may, it just may not be nothing for you. But God is not that type of God. He's not a, a nothing type of God. He doesn't want to see none of his children suffer. There are some people want to see you go to hell and fall down and bust your neck. They want to see you fail. You got some folks right now who's just looking at the clock and say it's just a matter of time before he falls. It's been going on 12 years. I tell you, 13 years. I tell you what, they can keep on looking. While they're looking... See, when people start talking about you like that, that means you're getting close to your purpose. You are getting close to your purpose of what God has planned for you. But see, one thing about the purpose, he is not going to reveal it to you until you get almost to your point. It's just like you start going on a journey. And when you take that ride with the Lord and you go on, you on that journey and you're on that path. Now, before you hit that destination, these are all of the things that you have to go through to get to from point A to point B. This is the situation with homeless people. Right now, they are on a journey. They are on a journey and their journey is going to come to an end because if they hold on just a little while longer, to fight the good fight of faith, they will be on their way. This is the things that I had to go through. My journey was 25 years 
of hell. And if I, excuse me, if I can do this, and if I can come out of this, why can't you? I'm no better than you are. All I want to do is serve the Lord whatever time I have. I just want to serve him. I want to, I want to help people. I want to be able to go and preach the word of God when it's my time. I want to go and travel around the world. I got a request out. And I put it to God. I gave it to him. I put it on the altar. And now I'm sitting on a good friend of mine that's helping me to, uh, to get me where I need to get. Bishop uh, John Thomas at a shining light, holiness church, Pentecostal. This man is in my life for a season. And he's giving me the tools to add on to what I have already and the purpose. I'm on my journey. And see, you will never hit your destination point because every time you get close, God has something new for you. He always has something new for you to do. It's never the same situation that he has. You will never repeat the same thing in life with God. You will never. Because when you go to bed tonight, this day is done. Your day is done. You will, you will not wake up and do the same thing again all over. You may get up. Yeah, you may do. You get up and go to work, but it ain't going to be the same way that you got up this morning. Every day is different. Every day is a new day. Like they say, this is the day. That the Lord has made. Amen. And if you don't rejoice in this, my brother and sisters, I'm trying to tell you something right now. I'm feeling some kind of way. The Bible's fine. I can bring the word. But I need to talk to you. We need to help these homeless people out here. Help them complete their journey. Help them to receive their purpose of life, which we are not doing. And none of the Jesus Christ, none of the preachers are helping these people. Some are, some churches are, but that's the extent that it goes to. That's the extent that this thing called life, it goes to. We have some selfish people out there. Right now, people are freezing out there. All I ask God is to do, put me in a position where I can help. I'm not worried about the money. We need money to survive. I don't make money like that. But I tell you what, all my bills are paid right now. How about this? I don't even have a job. All my bills are paid for. And I have a roof over my head. And I eat every day. And all my kids have their vehicles, three of my daughters. So why would I not try to help someone else? Do I have a vehicle? No, they have the vehicles. I ride with my daughters. Why? I ain't worried about that. Brothers, you ain't got much time left on this earth. You got more time behind you than you got forward. And if you don't get it, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't take advantage of this message tonight, I guess it just ain't for you. This wasn't for this was not your message tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. You better take advantage of the word of God coming from the man of God, given to the people of God. I think I got about one more minute and actually it's over. God bless.